Hi, my name is Dan Ring, and in this tutorial I'm going to be introducing the new keyframe-based tracking workflow. This tutorial relies on a few things that were introduced in previous tutorials, so if you find you don't quite get something, it's probably worth going back to the previous tutorials and having a look at those. Right, let's dive in. The idea behind keyframe tracking is to lay down keyframes and then allow the tracker to figure out what happened in between those. So let's start by creating a new track. This creates our first new keyframe here. Now I'm going to jump on 25 frames and then move the track in order to create a new keyframe. You can see here we now have a pair of keyframes. And now, just to make sure that both of these image patches are the same, I'm going to click on the keyframe patches. You can see that the border of the keyframe turns orange when we're on the same frame as that keyframe. If we look in the zoom window here, you can see it's pretty much in the right spot. To start the keyframe tracking, we go up to the top here and click the Key Track Current button. This starts keyframe tracking between the current pair of keyframes, these two here. So let's do that. You can see the keyframe track proceeding forwards in the shot, and although it looks like it's doing the same thing as the auto track we showed earlier, it's actually trying to match the current pattern window against both of the search windows of the keyframes, while also keeping the track position of the two keyframes locked. This keyframe tracking workflow is quite powerful, and in particular it allows us to set up our entire track in advance. So I'm going to do just that, and skip on another 25 frames. Create another keyframe, using the zoom window to get a nice precise lock on the nose. Skip back and forth to ensure we have the same position in each of the keyframes. And I'm going to set up five keyframes for this example. So now, if we want to track all of these keyframes, we use the Key Track All button. This finds each pair of keyframes and then tracks them sequentially. For example, this pair, this pair, this pair, and this pair. And I'm also going to turn on the Center Viewer button. This allows us to see how the track is doing better. That looks like it did a pretty good job. So already you can start to see just how powerful this new keyframe tracking workflow is for setting up your whole track in advance. But the really interesting things about this keyframe tracking workflow are yet to come. So let's now delete this track and try something a bit more difficult. Now for this trickier example, I'm going to try and track this tattoo on the girl's arm. So I'm going to create a track, zoom in, and move the tracker to the top circle of that tattoo, and then adjust the pattern window so that it captures most of the top of that tattoo. And I'm going to make the search window nice and large to make sure we capture the motion of the arm. So I'm going to start with an auto track and see how far that goes. And we can look at it here in the zoom window. And already I can see that it's drifted. And if you remember from the previous tutorial, we can turn on the traffic light system to see exactly where the track went wrong. To get a better look at our track, I'm going to enlarge the zoom window here. We can see that around the orange and red dots, that the track has really drifted. So, what we could do is try and go back to a frame here, our last good frame, and then try click track forwards and hope that it just works this time. But we want a better and more deterministic way of solving this problem. So to do this, we can use keyframe tracks. So at this frame, what we can do is click this Set Keyframe button, which adds a keyframe at frame 101. We can then jump on to a later frame. In this example, I'm going to jump onto frame 128, and I'm going to move the tracker to the top circle of that tattoo. And in doing this, we create a new keyframe. Now that we've set up two keyframes around the affected area, so from frame 101 to frame 128, I'm going to click the Key Track Current button to track over that difficult region. Now instantly, from the error here, we can see that that's done a much better job. We have a nice smooth change between the colors of red and green here. 
but that red area is still not perfect. The really useful thing now is that because we've already done a key track, if we create a new keyframe, or nudge the tracker so that it creates a new keyframe, the tracker will then retrack the affected areas in using the new keyframe. I'm now going to move the tracker up to the top section of that tattoo. This creates a new keyframe at frame 113, and then starts retracking between our new pairs of keyframes at 101 and 113, and 113 and 128. And that's done a pretty good job. And you can see that the area that was red has now turned green. But this has now flagged up a new red area here. You can see here that the track is not quite on the circle here. So what we can do now is again, move the tracker to where it should be, let go, and allow it to retrack. And instantly, you can see that the red frames have now turned green. If we now scrub along the timeline, we can see that this track is much better all round. So keyframe tracking has really helped us out here. To give you a better idea of what happens when you retrack, recall that in the last tutorial we looked at the track's error values in the curve editor. So this is the error curve for our track. We can see a couple of high peaks for our track here. These correspond to our yellow frames around here in the animation path. So if we scrub to each of these, let's have a look to see what the track is doing. Looking at the zoom window for these two peaks here, we can see that the track is a little bit off, but I'm, I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. If we go here, that we can see that the track is way off. So it's completely drifted. But what we can do now is again, pull the track into place and allow it to retrack. And see that it looks much better. We have a nice smooth track. It's important to note here that the height of that error curve has now been chopped in half. We now just undo that so you can see the old curve here. So up here, and when we added the new keyframe, we can see that we chopped that mountain of error in half. So this is a nice way to think about keyframe tracking. Every time you move the track, you create a new keyframe. You're imparting new information to the system, which gives you a better overall track. And you do this incrementally, so every time you touch the track, you improve it. This is a very similar idea to how rotoscoping works, where every time you move a control point or create a new keyframe, you end up with a better overall mat. So this concludes our tutorial on keyframe tracking. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.